Before we begin the interview, I'd like to remind everybody that you can purchase Paul Haley's book, One Man's War, from blurb.co.uk, which features many photos from his time on the Falkland Islands. Use the link below to find out more. Hello, welcome back to the channel. As a part of a series of shows um, on the 40th anniversary of the Falklands War, I'm joined today by Paul Haley, who was a photographer for Soldier magazine during that conflict. Um, and his work at the moment is part of an IWM exhibition. And I'm thrilled to have you on the channel. Welcome, Paul. Okay, thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so the first question I'd like to ask you is, can you tell me about your work for Soldier magazine just before the Falklands invasion? Right. Uh, well, just before, uh, obviously, um, well, no, not before the invasion, because that was the uh, first of April, wasn't it? Um, I, I don't remember, to be honest, what jobs I was doing, but I'd been working for MOD by that time for uh, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd been seven of those on Soldier magazine. And so our remit was to um, be ready to go anywhere in the world in, with 24 hours notice. And um, although that very rarely came up, uh, often, you know, sometimes you, you had two or three days notice. Mm. Um, so I was sort of well versed with army life, although I was a civilian photographer, just happened to be working for MOD. Um, but before I went to the Falklands, it was um, I was I covered the Welsh Falcon twenty uh, fifth of April. It started uh, yeah, uh, yeah. exercise to, for a shakedown for Fire Brigade, uh, and I covered that. And that was how I ended up going to the Falklands. Mm. Um, we'd been told by Ministry of Defence that we were definitely not going, and that um, they were limiting the number of press. Uh, I think it was about 20, was it 22 journalists altogether and, and two civilian photographers, uh, Tom Smith from the Express and Martin Cleaver from Press Association. And uh, we were told we definitely couldn't go. So right. that was, uh, we, were, we were just running around trying to do anything at all to do with the Falklands. So mm. getting ready, mm. you know, guy, like two power leaving the shop and traveling down in the coaches and then coming coming back because they didn't set off and all sorts of things like that um just trying to get any story we could for it yeah um, amazing um so when did you learn that you'd be going over to work on the conflict well i, I went down to um southampton to uh they had, they had a sort of a press day for uh, qe2 uh just before she sailed and uh, so I went down with loads of other press people and um, looked around the ship, took photographs and got back to the office uh, about five o'clock. And the editor called me into the office saying, uh, finish processing those films and capturing them up and then get off home, get ready, um, report to QE2 at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the next morning, um, you're going to sail with them. So at that time, I didn't know how far I was going to go. Um, just a matter of grabbing all my gear and yeah. shooting off down there and uh, getting on board. Wow. Wow. Um, so what was the island like when you made it down south? Um, well, it, it was it was a bit like Ben Beckler in Scotland, I thought. Okay. Um, lots of tussock grass and peat and then rocky outcrops. Um, and it was, although going down on QE2, I'd had time to study maps and, uh, you know, I'd listened in on briefings and things like that. Um, so I had a rough idea what it was like, but I was still surprised at how small the townships were and things. Mm. Um, it was, uh, yeah, quite, quite a shock. I suppose yeah. that it was so small. You don't expect, you know, people say, oh, it's a small town, like yeah. Darwin is a small town. Well, it's not a town at all, really. It was about six houses at the time. <laughs> so, you know, it's really different than, than calling it a town. Um, yeah. and, and Goose Green 
you know, larger but but similar. I mean, you know, very small area. Mm. Mm. Um. So, like, you know, was there a lot of? I'm not sure by that point the you know the troops were more inland. Did you, where you know, how were you sort of embedded in when you went in? Did, did, was there a way that you went into the island with the troops, or did you just yeah get I, off the ship? Yeah, I, I just um, I, I landed with five brigades, so it was after the, the battle for Goose Green, the two yeah. paragraphs. Um, I landed with five brigade. I just I photographed a couple of landing crafts leaving Canberra, uh, and then climbed on or jumped down into one myself and uh, went ashore with the many that were on board. I can't remember now, you know, probably 60 or 80, mm. something like that. I don't know how many they took. Um, uh, and landed on uh, Blue Beach on a little jetty, walked up the jetty, taking photographs of that and then turning around and photographing the other guys coming ashore. Yeah. Um, and then while once I landed, I was sort of free to go wherever I wanted. Uh, but that was one of the difficulties was finding out where something was going to happen and, and then getting there. Mm. Yeah, that leads really well into my next question. What was the challenging parts about photog uh, doing photography in a war zone? Well, in, in that particular area, it, the, the photography, this sounds a bit sort of silly really, but the photography was the least of my worries. You know, I was a, quite a competent photographer. Mm. Um, you know, and I'd, I'd done a few skirmishes and I'd, I'd done, you know, Northern Ireland, and Belize and, you know, various training exercises, Kenya a couple of times, yeah. things like that. Uh, so, you know, the photography was, sort of easy it was just the day-to-day -day living was hard i mean the, you know the yeah. weather was not brilliant um so trying to keep warm and um and dry and keeping the cameras dry was a challenge yeah. um, and then just finding somewhere to sleep on a night somewhere to um eat you know getting something to eat it wasn't as though you could you know Nip off back to a hotel somewhere, no. like that. so I mean, there was just you know nowhere. So mm. that that was the challenge. It was uh, yeah. not really the photography. Mm. And I always found you know working with soldiers, if if you're there with them, you you sort of one of them anyway. They you know they accept you, um, mm. they accept you quite well. So. Um, yeah, it was just the getting around. Mm, difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So I, one, one thing I'll ask you quickly before we move on to the, the final question. Um, it's a great photo of you in your Dennis and smock. I always wondered how you came to be wearing the smock because by that point, they'd all switched to DPM. I just, it's a great, you know, that's an iconic photo of you with all your equipment um, on the island. But I, I've always wondered, you know, how did the smock come about? Yeah, the smock. Well, uh, it was it was funny. I'd done a couple of um, exercises with uh, what used to be called 7 Para RHA. Um, and then it went to, heck, what was it called? Just, uh, seven, just 7 RHA, I think. They, they dropped the para, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, and so when... I'd done several exercises with them, and I, you know, I knew many of them. Some of their free fall team, and um, uh, used to good. They were based in Old Shop, where where a soldier was, and uh, we used to go to their sergeant's mess sometimes on a Friday afternoon for happy hour or happy several hours. <laughs> and um, one of the uh, the guys that we were friendly with. Uh, presented me um, with his Demis and Smock when they weren't allowed to wear them anymore. Amazing. And, uh, it, you know, they made a bit of a thing about it in the mm. in mess. And um, so I, I was presented with it, I suppose. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I love it. I just yeah. I grabbed it when I, when I went because I thought, well, I, you know, I don't want to be wearing you know, bright red waterproofs and things like that yeah um so i took that with me but 
I didn't, when I set off, I didn't know that I was going to be landing here. You know, I thought probably we'd get to Ascension and we'd turn around and come back or something. Mm. Um, but obviously we didn't. And um, so I had to try and get some waterproofs uh, when I was on board and some decent boots uh, because I hadn't got anything like that with me. Um, but I had me smog. So that's uh, great. Back. Yeah, it's a great photo of you. Of the, of the, of you yeah, it was hated the by the, the paras, by the two and three para, because they weren't allowed to have this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very and they were a great smock. I mean, it was brilliant. Oh, yeah, fantastic. They are they're such an iconic piece of British like military. Uh, yeah, I wish I'd still got yeah. it now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I've got, I have a reproduction one um, in my wardrobe. It's a prized possession. So my last question for you, Paul, um, is uh, what's your favourite photograph that you took from your time on the Falklands Islands? It's a bit like asking me which my favourite child is, isn't it? Oh, it's very true, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I mean, one of the ones that I particularly like because it was just so so difficult to do, and it's it's not on the island. It was the first uh, helicopter landing on QE2 on the on the rear deck of QE2. Mm-hmm. It was it was into the sun, and you know, in in the days of film, it was quite a difficult shot to get. Mm. Um, and I just think I nailed it, and it made the front pages of most of the papers yeah. we got down there, all around the world. Um, so I, I quite like that image still. Um, but th- there are several that I'm sort of proud of on the islands. I mean, the Scots Guards group photograph on Tumble Down at, at yes. the moment of the check fire was the probably the most difficult one to get right. because trying to sit 12 of uh, Scots guards down uh, when they're all leaping around and shaking each other's hand and things after having a, a miserable, miserable, horrendous night yeah. you know, fighting and, and mm. sadly eight killed, 40 um, odd injured. Um, trying to get a group photograph of them was a bit of a nightmare. Um, and it was just a matter of sort of pushing some of them down and, and pushing them into place and them not realizing what I thought was going to be a really important photograph. Mm. Um, and it was funny as a photographer because I used to hate doing group photographs. Right. Um, and yet on on that at that particular moment I just thought that it was going to make a great photograph. So I suppose that one's probably my favorite. Um, yeah, it is. If I've got to have a <laughs> It's a fantastic photo, and you know your work is your work is to the test of time. And I, I just when I was doing my research and, and finding out people I'd like to interview, I came across your work and it led me to. I, I bought a couple of soldier magazines from the eight, from that time with your work in, All right, yeah. um, just to just to have sort of the original <laughs> publication. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's absolutely fantastic. And I'm I'm so thankful for you be able to join us today, Paul. It's been it's been a fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, no, no worries. Thank you.